What is going on everybody? This is Joey from Universal CPA Review. In this video, we're going to go through the most important topic within the cash section of the FAR exam, and that's going to be the bank reconciliation. So before we dive into it, just wanted to give you a quick reminder to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join any of our Facebook groups. In those groups, you'll find additional free visuals and video explanations to use at your disposal. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And if you find that you're more of a visual learner and want to be a part of our program in more of a permanent way, feel free to apply discount code UNIVERSAL2021 to any of our products at the checkout. All right, so let's dive into it. Okay, so arguably the most important topic when it comes to the cash section of this exam, right? Remember, we're taking each line item within the financial statements and we're dissecting it. We want to understand where something is being reported and how something is being valued. So when it comes to the cash line item, right, this current asset within the balance sheet, we might see a discrepancy between what is being reported in the books, aka the financial statements, and what is being reported in the bank statements, which is the source documentation from where we pull our information from when reporting this figure in our books. So the name of the game here is being able to reconcile what is being reported in the books from what is being reported on the bank statements. And what the exam wants to get through your head is that there are certain adjustments that need to be made in order to tie out the books to the bank statements. So we need to know those adjustments inside and out. At the end of the day, the net bank balance must equal the net cash balance per the books. And the net book balance must equal the bank statements net cash balance. Okay, so I know that might seem a little bit confusing, but just trust me when I say we're going to simplify this and make it easier in your head. Okay, so at the end of the day, we want to get our actual cash balance. So let's think about Farmer Boy Eggs Corporation. They're reporting their financial statements, but they notice that what is being reported in the cash balance in their books doesn't tie out to what they see in their bank statements over at J.P. Morgan Chase. So they want to know, okay, whose fault is this? Is this our bookkeeper's fault, right? Our boy Sinbad, who works in our bookkeeping department? Or is this our banker Dottie's fault over at J.P. Morgan Chase? So let's be real, chances are higher that this is going to be Sinbad's fault because a lot of bookkeeping is still done somewhat manually. Okay, although there are plenty of bookkeeping softwares out there to make life easier, I hear QuickBooks is a good one, the reality is a lot of errors are still going to occur and transactions are not going to be reported quite as automatically as transactions you would see being reported by large banks populated in a bank statement. Okay, so we're going to focus specifically on Dottie over at the bank. And we're going to focus on the first two letters of her name, the D and the O. So when it comes to the FAR exam, there's just so much information that you're going to need to know that you're going to need to simplify this and create little memory aids to the fullest extent that you can. Okay, but we also got to know the intuition. So the only time that there's going to be adjustments made to the bank statements is if there are deposits in transit or outstanding checks. Okay, so deposits in transit, the D in Dottie's name, is saying that Farmer Boy Eggs has gone to the bank and they deposited their checks but they're told that they have three to five business days for this to hit the bank statements, right? Don't you love it when they tell you that? There you have three to five business days for this to hit your bank statements. So if there are deposits in transit, this means that our bookkeeper Sinbad reported this correctly because when he saw the checks, he recorded the cash that was received. So it begs the question, what do we need to do in order for this to tie out to the cash that is presented in the bank statements? Okay, so we technically recorded it properly because cash was received. So all we need to do now for it to tie out is add this to the bank statements until it hits the bank statements because right now there is a discrepancy because the bank statements aren't properly reflecting the fact that cash was deposited. Okay, so anytime you see deposits in transit, this is getting added to the bank statements. At the end of the day, we need this to tie out to what was properly recorded in the books, whereas the O in Dottie's name stands for outstanding checks. And this is just the opposite. We're saying that we paid checks Okay, so maybe Farmer Boy Eggs purchased some chickens for their chicken coop. They're saying, okay, we paid this to our suppliers via check. Cash has gone out the door. We had our bookkeeper Sinbad go ahead and record the cash outflow, which is going to reduce the cash balance. All right, but it hasn't left the bank yet because Dottie's saying you have three to five business days for this to leave your bank statement. We're going to reduce this from the bank statements, right? We reduce this properly as cash outflow in our books. Now we need to reduce this from the bank statements until it actually hits the bank statements so that it ties out. Okay, so we got to remember the O in Dottie's name stands for outstanding checks. The only two items that you need to remember for adjustments being made to the bank statements will be D for deposits in transit and O for outstanding checks. Now let's take a look at the adjustments that need to be made to the book side of this reconciliation. 
Okay, so there's a very real chance that you're going to be sitting at the Prometric Center, scrambling in your head, trying to remember, wait, what impacts the book side versus the bank statement side? All right, so here's a hint. You need to remember that Dottie has two items that impact the bank statements. So before you go crazy trying to memorize everything, let's keep it simple. Let's remember what impacts the shorter list, the bank statement side, which is the D and the O. All right, but when you think about the book side, you're going to think about Sinbad. I know, wild name. And specifically, we're going to focus on the first four letters of Sinbad's name. Okay, so this list is made up of service charges, interest income, non-sufficient funds, sometimes referred to as NSF checks, and bank collections. Okay, so the reason there are more elements to the book side than the bank statement side is generally going to be because in today's day and age, bank statements are automatically populated by the major banks, right? Multi-billion, trillion dollar corporations, they have a lot of technology. They're not going to make a lot of errors when populating these bank statements automatically. As Sinbad might make some errors when he's populating the books manually. Okay, so something might happen automatically to the bank statements that Sinbad might not be completely aware of, which will mean that he has to go back and make the adjustment to the books. Okay, so firing this up with the I in Sinbad's name, this is going to stand for interest income. Okay, so if Farmer Boy Eggs has a checking account, maybe it's a savings account, maybe even an investment account, sometimes what's going to happen is they're going to receive interest income, right? Maybe JP Morgan Chase tells them, hey, thanks for banking with us. Here's 2% on your savings account. We're giving you interest income for banking with us. Okay, but unfortunately, it's going to be up to Sinbad to go back into the bank statements and see where that income is coming from. Right? They're not going to reach out and say, hey, Sinbad, by the way, just a heads up, there's an extra 2% coming in. You should go ahead and update this. So all I'm saying is now there's this temporary discrepancy that Sinbad has to go back and add this to the books to reflect the fact that there is more cash in there than there might seem. Same story when it comes to bank collections, right? This is the B in Sinbad's name. If there's an automatic payment, for example, that's set up by Farmer Boy Eggs, right? One of the customers are automatically paying monthly. So the bank is collecting this on the behalf of the company. So maybe this is a one-off thing and Sinbad wasn't aware of the fact that more cash was collected automatically. So Sinbad has to go back, notice the cash collection, and then re-add it to the books so that it ties out. All right, so those are the two additions to the books that need to be made, interest income and bank collections. So what about service charges? This is the S in Sinbad. So we're now saying that sometimes the bank will have something like an overdraft penalty, right? Maybe this is just a service charge for banking with them. So this is money that is being charged to the company account. So this is the bank saying, we reduced your bank balance, by the way, this $25 amount was a service charge. We're not going to tell you specifically because it's really none of our business, okay? But when Sinbad goes back and looks at the bank statements, he's going to see this $25 reduction to the cash balance. So if the bank statements went ahead and reduced it, now Sinbad has to reduce it from the bank so that it ties out. So like we said, now all of a sudden there's this temporary discrepancy. It's not until Sinbad goes back and reduces this in the books that this will tie out. Finally, the N in Sinbad stands for NSF checks, or sometimes known as non-sufficient funds. Okay, so this once again, N in Sinbad. Okay, so the check that was received by Farmer Boy Eggs has bounced, right? The customer says, we swear we had the money, and Farmer Boy Eggs is like, hey, listen, we believe you, but uh, yeah, the check bounced. So Sinbad now has to go back, right? Sinbad's going to be like, well, we thought that you would have the cash that you said you had when you paid us. So Sinbad recorded this. He was like, hey, I thought in good faith that you would have the cash that you said you had when you gave us this check. I went ahead and increased our cash balance. But it turns out you don't have the cash. So now all of a sudden I have to reduce this cash balance so that it properly ties out to the bank statements. Okay, so NSF checks is a reduction to the books. And finally we have errors. Spilled milk, baby. So here's the deal when it comes to errors. This is kind of a hybrid. Technically errors can be made by either the bank or the bookkeeper. Right? But like we said, the banks are run by these huge corporations, right? Tons of automatic systems in play. Millions and millions of dollars are allocated to the automation of these systems. So there's not a ton of errors that are going to happen on the bank side. But that being said, what you might see on the exam frequently is the fact that the bookkeeper might make an error. Okay, so maybe Sinbad booked this cash received as $42,342, but the reality is the cash that was actually received was $42,324. Okay, so Sinbad misplaced the last two digits, the 42 with the 24. So the cash balance per the books, is overstated by $18. Okay, so Sinbad accidentally recorded this as $18 more than it should have been. So the cash received must be reduced by $18. This is a reduction to the books. Could have easily just been the opposite, though. Could have accidentally recorded it as 42324 
when it should have been 42342 in which case $18 would have had to have been added to the books. Okay, but point being is that errors can result in either an addition or a subtraction to either the books or the bank statements. Okay, so errors are just going to be a matter of reading the description very carefully. All right, we got to know Dottie. We got to know the D and the O. Let's start there. Deposits in transit are going to be added. Outstanding checks are going to be subtracted to the bank statements. Okay, we got to remember Sinbad on the bookkeeping side. We're going to remember interest income, bank collections, service charges, and NSF checks. You got to know what's getting added and what is getting subtracted. All right, but a little hint if you're in a crunch for time, let's start with the shorter list. Always going to be the D and the O for Dottie. Okay, so taking a look at Farmer Boy Eggs, they are performing this bank reconciliation. Very common question that you might see in the form of a multiple choice question could also be in a task-based simulation. And what they're going to want to know is if you can calculate the actual balance, right? We're going to be reconciling what is reported in the books to the bank statements. Okay, so let's fire it up. Farmer Boy Eggs has a cash balance of $55,000 on the last day of December of the current year. Okay, so we're going to assume that this 55000 is referring to what is reported in the books because it proceeds to say that the bank statements show a cash balance of 48400 So now we have all of this additional information that we need to use as our adjustments for calculating the actual balance. Okay, so we're always going to start on the bank statement side of this because this is a much shorter list. So we're going to remember our girl Dottie, and we're going to remember the D and the O in Dottie's name. The D stands for Deposits in Transit. Okay, so deposits in transit we see here is $6,000. This is always going to be added to the bank statement cash balance. Okay, so 48400 plus 6000 is where we're at, right? Why did we record an addition to the bank statements? Because when the deposit was made by Farmer Boy Eggs, the bookkeeper already reported this. Okay, so cash came in. We received the check. It just hasn't hit the bank statements yet, right? Dottie's saying it takes three to five business days for this to hit your bank statements. Okay, so... We got to wait this out, but in the meantime, we're going to add this to the bank statements so that this ties out. Okay, so the outstanding checks is the O in Dottie's name. I spy $1,100 in outstanding checks. So this is a reduction to the bank balance. Why? Because this is cash outflow. Farmer Boy Eggs says that they wrote this check. So the bookkeeper went ahead and made this reduction to the book balance. But the bank is saying it takes three to five business days for this to leave your account. Okay, so... We need to wait this out. In the meantime, we're going to reduce this from the bank statement balance. It's correctly recorded in the books, but in order for this to tie out, this is an adjustment made to the bank statements. All right, so we know the D and the O in Dottie's name. How about the S, the I, the N, and the B in Sinbad's name? All right, we're thinking about our bookkeeper Sinbad. We're going to think about Sinbad a little bit less than Dottie because we're always going to start with the shorter list, but nonetheless, we need to know what the impacts and the adjustments that will be made to the books are. Okay, so the S in Sinbad stands for service charges. Service charges are going to be a reduction to the books, right? Maybe you get hit with an overdraft penalty. The bank statements are automatically going to reduce this in your bank balance. So now it's up to the bookkeeper to go back and notice that and make the reduction to the books, right? That's cash that they no longer have. The balance shouldn't reflect that in their financial statements. Okay, so what about the I in Sinbad? That's going to stand for interest income. Interest income is going to be an addition to the books. Right? Reason being is because maybe the company had a savings account and they received 2% interest for banking with us. Right? You're thinking of the bank saying, thank you for banking with us. Here's 2% of the total amount that you have in that savings account. All right? They're just going to reflect this in the bank statements. It's up to us to notice where that cash came from and re-add it to the books. Okay, So that's an addition of $2450. All right, next we have the N in Sinbad. That stands for NSF checks, non-sufficient funds. Right, The customer says, hey, I swear, we have the money. And Sinbad and Farmer Boy Eggs is like, listen, man, we believe you. But the check bounced. That means you technically don't have the funds. All right, So the bank statement went ahead and automatically reduced that. They say that the cash never came in. We recorded that in the books because we thought that the cash was coming in. Now we need to go back and reduce it so that it ties out. So we have another reduction of $1,950. Right, so now at the end of the day, our book balance is 53300 which ties out to our bank balance of 53300 Therefore, we know that we did this right. Okay, so just to recap, any adjustments that need to be made is going to be key to understanding the bank reconciliations. I promise there is an extremely high chance that this is going to be tested in some capacity on your exam. 
We got to know the impacts that are made to the bank statements. Always going to be the D and the O, deposits in transit, outstanding checks, not going to impact the book balance. Right? We got to remember the impacts to the books, interest income, non-sufficient funds, bank collections, and service charges. Never going to impact the bank balance. Right? We also need to remember that errors are our hybrid. Okay, so errors can either impact the bank balance or the book balance. Just depends on where the error was made. Okay, so the final work product should tie out. As you can see in this example, the bottom amounts, right, the adjusted bank balance should tie out to the adjusted book balance. Okay, and something else that's a little sneaky to note is if for whatever reason checks written exceed the cash balance, this is considered a negative cash balance. Okay, so this is always going to be presented as a current liability. Something that is not frequently tested, but has been seen in the past, so we need to be aware of it. All right, so now it's time to go back and apply everything we learned to the multiple choice questions and the task-based simulations. If you're still not understanding it, that's what the video explanations are for on all of the MCQs and all of the sims. Don't be shy to use those. Let's keep moving.